Hi everybody! <laughs> Welcome back to Pull Arcade. This is a special little episode that we are doing. Um, it is a one-off, so to speak, because we went to... <laughs> are you down over there? Yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> Hi. I'm sorry, are we like, you know, totally distracting you? No, I'm good. Are you sure? I think so. Alright. Wait until you're done. <laughs> Is your OCD under control? Fine. 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 Thank you. Oh my god. Let's start this again. Hi everybody. Welcome back to a special episode of Polar Game because we're going to talk to you about how we went to the Reno Pop Culture event at the Reno event center convention center. convention center whatever it is. and the one uh, over by atlantis yep it's over by the atlantis and um we had a great day meeting a bunch of folks and meeting up with a bunch of folks and matt got really red in the face because there were some really cute chicks <laughs> i'm just teasing you <laughs> I couldn't help myself. It was funny. <laughs> that was only a Moving on. <laughs> so we we gotta meet some local artists um, and a couple of local groups. And I'm going to hand the business cards over, and we will be adding links to these people's um, websites and whatnot uh, to help promote them along with us. And um, this is the Sierra Nevada Anime Fans Unite. Um, it's basically a anime gaming kind of um, group of folks. And they come and they hang out, I think the gal said, a couple of times a month. They do like little events. And again, this is this, this beginning stuff is all of our local people. So would you do your best, Mr. Vanna White? And, sh and show and show oh, the people them, okay. that them's that the peoples. Hold on, I got a good view on there. And focus. Nope. It's still focusing on you. There we go. I think that's a little bit better. So yes, Snafu. That's what they call themselves. Um, there is a bunch of cute gals there talking about you know having fun, hanging out, kind of the stuff that we do. Okay. Um, but in real life personable action I guess it's what it is um, we also met this nice gal she's really into making cups and painting them um, they're a little bit on the tiny possibly gory side she's got a little bit of a dark sensibility um, when it comes to her art but it's cool and it's pretty and it's neat and it's pop culture she does all kinds of stuff would you would you read to the fine folks her name no please Oh, uh, no. Uh, Art by... Yeah, you pronounce that. Holly Yeah. I was thinking Holly Yeah, but... Anyway, Holly Yeah? Whatever. Holly Yeah. They, they can decide. I'm not good at this stuff. So she's also in our local Reno there area. There we go. Now you focus. There we go. Kind of hard to read on the so, background, but... Oh, show the back side. Peace, 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 peace. Yay! See, she does neat, nifty little stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Kind of, sort of, maybe there. Yeah, that works. Um, who else did we run into? I'm going to be doing an event for um, our local kind of steampunk group. Um, they are the High Desert Steampunk Group, which is their name. And uh, there's a new event coming up. And it is the Winter in Wonderland event that they're going to have. And um, again, they do stuff a few times a year. Uh, this particular event is going to be Alice in Wonderland. And it is November 16th and 17th, which is actually this upcoming weekend. And I'm going to be one of their models. And I am going to be working with a gal who goes by the name of Twisted Wolf. She does leather work. And I will be in a kind of a basic steampunky outfit, and she does all the accessorizing for me. So I get to show off her gear and her swag and what she does. So it's really pretty. 
So, show the, the nice fine folks. She doesn't have her real name on there. So, that's where she goes by. Hmm. We'll, we'll let you know. Let's see if I can actually get this to focus right. <laughs> Mm. It's trying to focus. It's trying to. Get in there. Oh, yep. There you go. Dude. Close enough. Mm hmm Give me a few seconds to read that, or, or you can just pause it. Whichever. And I know I'll be working with this other gal. Her name is Shelly Jackson. She goes by the Clockwork <laughs> Monsters. She creates other accessories, and she's also here and local, and is going to be a part of the steampunk event that I will be attending. Uh, clockwork monster. Mm-hmm. She does some really pretty stuff. I like it. Shelly Jackson. Did you say that? You I did, did, you say, did say I that? Did. I said her name. Okay. Let's just go to the front and bam, look at that. See how much easier it is when it's like, you know, in focus and big enough to... To read? Go over this way. Nope. Maybe. Maybe. No, that works. We're good. They, I think they can, can see. They, they can pause it. Put the back. Um... I don't know if you'll see that one. No, 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 So those were our local people, and then we met lots of folks, um, what? mostly from the West, um, people from... Well, there was Colorado, Utah, mm -hmm. California, mm -hmm. Oregon, Washington. Yep. Uh, and we would like to say hello to them at some point, and we will be, you know, as they say, what what is the, um... Mixing? No. Mingling. Well, we did the mixing and the mingling at the Reno Pop Culture. Mm -hmm. But, the, you know, the the getting to know, the crossing the information. and so so Social out. networking. Social networking. <laughs> the thing that I can't think of. <laughs> like, your, like, one of your main things. Well, it's not one of my you don't, want, you, don't, you don't want me talking to people. I will scare people away. Actually, he did. He's like, no, no, you go over there and you go talk to them. <laughs> she did, too. <laughs> <laughs> With I, I, our I social networking, our little stack of cards, we will be saying hello. Could have had more. We could have. And, and part of our social networking was <clears throat> the t-shirts. You are... Really, little dragon? Don't mind me. <laughs> Just trying to keep it off camera, so it's... Um, I've talked about them before in the shirts. Is um, our Polar Cave t-shirts, which we actually wore as a matching pair. <laughs> I think it's the only way he would ever dress up as a matching pair to anybody. But we did. We went around and said hello to folks and um, trying to get a couple subscribers for the YouTube channel. We did. We did. Yay, we got a couple. So thank you who met us at the Reno Pop Culture and signed up and became subscribers of the channel. I, I believe it was... Uh, it was. I think one of our one. first one was that lady right there. Yeah, she actually she subscribed on, on the spot. Like Got on her, her phone. Her husband, boyfriend mm -hmm. looked, looked us up. next to her. Yeah. Subscribed right there on the spot. It was cool. Which was very nice. Um, did we want to talk about the toys? Yeah, that's why we got okay. them. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, Jesus. we also have got a few extra... You know, it's, it's real pop culture, and there's vendors, and there's eye candy everywhere, and you just kind of can't help yourself. You have to bring something home. You can't go to a friggin' <laughs> a Comic-Con and not, and not you know, bring something home. So. You know, um, and there was all kinds of stuff, and he really liked the, you know. Um, we each got one. Let's just put it that way. We each got one thing, um, but he liked, there was these people who made like leather bags and, and vests and just. Uh, that was. Um, oh, oh, they were beautiful, gorgeous. Um, can't find it. They're not from around here. No, they were, uh, there we go. Who is it? Stephen and Marie Belongi, Belongi, uh, Celtic Dragon Leather. Yes, and they created some beautiful stuff. Yeah, that's not going to show up right, but. Um, yeah, we'll put the, the links in the he, description. He definitely kind of geeked out. Did they, have, they had bracers, like the big bracers, and the bags, and the, the, the leather coats. And they had books. They had leather book coverings. Book, book bindings. Book bindings. Yeah. That were gorgeous. And, and uh, embroidered. Which I think this one's for Mike right here. Mike's going to like this one. Look at that. That, that was the <laughs> uh, Art by Roman. Mm-hmm. Um, Instagram, YouTube, email, and www. 
he was a good one. Um, keep talking. I'm, I'm just. You're doing your thing. You're telling folks. Um, I'm not even gonna say that name. That was that. That was that uh, author kid from uh, Colorado. Colorado, yeah. Mm -hmm. Young, young right, man. Right in the D and D books. And and that was what this gentleman over here kind of geeked out a little bit was on a lot of the D and D stuff. Um, there was a lot. They even had leather bags for your D and D mm -hmm. dice. That mm -hmm. was cool. Oh, you should tell them about the Fallout. Oh, Pavilion. <laughs> the museum. Yeah, they had a Fallout museum, and um, like of a, course at the museum like they had a, they had a um, place where you could buy certain things. Like they actually had like new Coca Cola bottles, and they had caps. And they, I, you know, what I didn't see. I didn't see a Pip Boy. Oh yeah, there was a kid wearing one. Oh, was it? Mm -hmm. Okay. He, his there was, mom, there he was put the, the kind of like a mannequin on. that had like a full like leather. The raider outfit. The raider outfit and um. With the the uh, the vault suit underneath it. And they had a big gigantic helmet. Mm -hmm. One of the helmets. The power armor helmets. The T. I want to say T forty five, T fifty, T fifty, T forty five. The early ones, not the new, like the X O one or the. Uh, anyway. And what yeah. what else did they have that was blue and it was a liquid? And oh, you were the, going crazy the, the moonshine, the, moon uh, the uh, Nuka Cola shine, or whatever it was. It was like seventy-five dollars for a little bottle, but it was like bright fluorescent blue, and it had the, the glitter and stuff it in it. And it swirled around and you messed with it. Not for seventy-five bucks though. <laughs> I can make it myself with some Drano and like Goldschlager, probably. I don't fucking know. Um, what else did they have? Um, they had one of those big, gigantic like if you took. A circular saw blade, and you stuck it on the end of a couple of different funky pieces, and the, the, it was a the, weapon of sorts. The, the Raider saw axe. Yeah, that was pretty neat. They had all the pills, the, the mentats, and all that stuff. It was cool. They had a lot of stuff. but So some of it was just for looking at and admiring and drooling over, and some of it was for the purchase to bring home. Mm -hmm. They also had, if I remember correctly, I thought I saw it up on the wall, they had a calendar with they a Nuka Cola girl in they it. Did, yeah. <laughs> Which I thought was really. And they had a, a mole rat mounted on the wall wearing uh, the the old uh, uh, vault party hats. <laughs> from I think it was three, no four, three. I want to say three. Yeah, three. Fallout three. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. When you were you start out as a kid in the vault and then you grow up and then you leave the vault because your dad left. And you have to go find it. That was three. Yeah. So um, some so. of the goodies that we actually did take home. Um, as you can see from the top shelves up above. It goes all the way around. Go, it does go all the way around, but this is what's in camera view. And then some over there um, on the bookshelves and some over there. Robert was a huge pop collector, Funko pop collector. And um, I didn't know what I would want to keep out of his collection, what I might want to give away. And I have given a few of his pops away to very specific people very specific pops because I knew they were either given to them or they gave them to Robert and I returned them back to him after Robert passed away or just one particular pop stuck out in my head and it's like oh so and so needs to have this pop Robert would really want them to have this so I have given a few of his pops away but I've kept at like 98% of them um, and the other day I actually ran across a Stanley pop that was kind of bronzes that one happens to be out in the living room with the other pops that are out there. So his collection of things are all throughout this home. Um, the, what oh, you see here is mostly the game room, which houses, as you can see, the majority of Robert's collected video game library um, and his, some of his pops, the pops that I thought were appropriate to come into the game room. Mm -hmm. Um but yeah, I, on occasion I actually got pops of my own, and Robert Shh. got me pops, like for my birthdays and Christmas for things that I liked. I have a few of them. Some of them are Snoopy, and some of them are the Fraggle Rock ones. Um, but a particular pop came out, um, I want to say a few months ago, and it is very much who Robert is, and it's as you can see it's part of our channel is that it's a polar bear and that was you know Robert's kind of spirit animal I guess you could say he just the became, embodiment the embodiment of he always just became like he was just known as the polar bear 
Or did he have the tattoo on his leg? And yes, and he had the tattoos on his leg. And just um, outside in a blizzard and shorts and. and that and man was never cold. Was no, no, he wasn't ever cold. He never got cold ever, not once. It seemed like. Um, so of course he really, really attached himself to the Coca-Cola bear, um, for many reasons. Um, not to mention that he was a huge fan of, you know, soda and whatnot, things that aren't necessarily good for you, but he loved it anyways. Um, and Will Bento. 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 Before we start that, I'm going to go grab the other one. Yeah, oh, we're going to go grab the Stan Lee Pop. I yeah. want to show it to you guys, too. Okay, grab right back. So we'll be right back. So, Matt went out and got this. I found it at a shop in Fallon, and Matt got it out of the living room. Uh, remember the name of the place? Actually, I don't. <laughs> I was hoping he would, because it's in your town. I think it's uh, Titan Comics. I think that's what it was. New place, Main Street. <clears throat> right, let's see if I can get this in I, I, I rarely do this in general because... Keep talking. Robert was such a collector. Um, it was always Robert bringing stuff home. I rarely ever brought anything home. And there were plenty of times where I would see something and then go and put it back on the shelf. And then Robert would have to drag me over there, pick it up, and drag me back to go and purchase it. Because since he was such a collector, I didn't want to... I didn't want to bring anything extra home because we didn't have the wall space. Our apartment was so tiny. It was like 620 square feet. I mean, like, like no joke. It was really, really tiny. Um, and the majority of Robert's collection and everything we had was in our living room. So I tried as much as possible to not bring stuff home. But when I saw the Stan Lee pop, I walked past and I was like, oh! <gasps> I need to have that. Did you explain what it was? Um, Not, the Stanley Pop? Yeah. Other than it's... Look, like more detail, because I don't know if they could well, tell on the camera what exactly what it was. It's like Stanley in bronze. It's like he's a bronze statue. And I don't know why, just that particular one, because I've seen other Stanley ones, and they didn't quite get to me, but I think maybe because of Stanley's passing in the past couple of years... And like, because that's what came to mind. Like, oh my God, Stan Lee needs to have a statue. He does. It's all and, old and bronze. And I like that it was old and bronze. And like, it's like Stan Lee has a statue. Like, if he doesn't have one, he needs to have one soon. Like, in his hometown of where he was born. Or maybe the city in which he resided in. Somewhere in L.A., maybe? Both. Both? Sorry. I don't I don't know a whole lot about Stan Lee's Put it right, put it right up there life. above the Hollywood sign. <laughs> you know, he's, Stan Lee has a... Um, Hollywood Square. I mean, not Hollywood star. Square. He's got a Hollywood star. No, but you know that, that big statue that was like Brazil? That big Jesus statue? That yeah, Brazil? it's in Rio. Rio. Like something like that above the Hollywood sign, but Stan Lee. <laughs> holding up like, you know, a comic book it, in this hand. Like, which, like a cross between the, the, the Jesus statue and the Statue of Liberty kind of thing. <laughs> but like up on the mountain above the Hollywood sign, just... Stanley. And then you know what? If it was that big, they should have like Iron Man and um, Spider Man, and, like sitting on his shoulders, like all of his creations, cool. all of his creations, kind of like sitting on his shoulder. That that would be epic. Oh my god! Like Spider Man is hanging down somewhere. You know? <laughs> that would be awesome. So that's kind of one of the reasons, like why I saw it, because I have I've seen other Stanley pops and they just did, didn't quite get to me. And I usually don't bring stuff home unless like it. It gets me like I I like I have to like it literally has to scream my name and say please take me home and for some reason this um, Stanley pop um, said please bring me home so that's why I did um, but mm -hmm. the one I was talking about earlier um, the I saw it and I was like I need to have it and and I was like I can't get to it right now I can't I can't get out to go get it and I, I reached out to our local Reno Pop Hunter group that is run pretty much and administered by Will Bento. Um, he's like, I found it. I know people who found it. We'll get it for you. And and he brought it to me. But the funny thing about this particular one is that Matt and I were going at the Reno Pop, Pop um, main area. And as we were wandering through all the different vendors we came to one of the pop vendors and immediately particularly since Matt is taller than I am he saw this and 
and I looked at it and I stopped and I paused. No pun intended for pause. Um, <laughs> I know, I'm Scoopy. <laughs> um, and he's like, Matt got my attention. I went, I know, I know. And I didn't say anything. I just kind of shook my head like, I know, I, I see it. I recognize it. Because I knew in the back of my head that Will was bringing this to me. Because Will had said that he would remember to bring it to me. And so I didn't say anything to Matt. And I didn't go goo goo gaga over it up on the shelf because I knew that this was being brought to me by Will and I just want to say thank you on camera to Will for bringing this to me. It means a lot to me and it would have meant very much a lot to Robert. So when Will saw us on the floor with his family, um, he came up and he gave me a great big hug from behind and surprised me and I introduced Will to Matt. and. Um, Will starts going through his backpack. He's like, oh yeah, I got this for you. And he pulls out this particular Coca-Cola pop bear that I <laughs> the really one we, wanted. The we just passed. The one that we had just literally just passed within like minutes. Minutes of just passing. And, <laughs> and the look on Matt's face was like, dude, why didn't you just tell me? It's like, I wanted to surprise you. I'm sorry. Because I knew it was coming and then I saw it. And I was like, yeah, yeah. I just didn't want to say anything. Um, but you get to do yours next. What What did you what? see that you went gaga and crazy we'll over? We'll do the same thing. You You talk the, about the, it, and then I'll hold it up. I want to hear you on here. No, 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 no. This is this one. I want to hear you, you explain it. No. This is gonna be fun. Go ahead. Show the people. I don't really remember. It says the name right on it. No, I know, but I don't remember. Like, if I no, you saw it first. Yeah, I saw it. You saw I, it first. I, I, it was above my head. I snatched this thing up like it was solid gold. <laughs> you did. And just because you know, they can't see it yet. They okay. can't see it yet. No, tell them. I'm, I'm, hey, I'm getting there. <laughs> it's a oh, oh. <laughs> little peak. Anyway, um, I'm a geek, nerd, dork. Whatever you want to call it, I'm a the Star Wars. I, I'm, yes, I'm, I'm a big Star Wars fan, even though they're owned by Disney now. <clears throat> um, but I used to have a sizable, yeah, Star Wars collection, and I sold it all because I needed the money, and uh, I regret it. But the money was for a good cause. Anyway, I uh, your collection is has restarted to grow again. The uh, was it the Disney Plus Channel or whatever it's called? Mm -hmm. They have this show called The Mandalorian, and if you know anything about Star Wars, you know what a Mandalorian is. Well, I saw this, <laughs> and me being the the geek I am and fan of the Mandalorian way of life, that's really, really and the many hours, hours, days worth of time <coughs> spent playing Star Wars online mm -hmm. and still do kind of unfortunate event happened on online anyway um he used to play his mandalorian all <laughs> the time and he missed his clan of um, Mandalorians almost, almost religiously online. yeah it was almost religiously for a while there so yeah i'm very very happy with this it's going to go on the shelf right with great pride right up Point up there above the shelf. That's the Star Wars section. Yeah, it's probably going to go right to, no, no, to the other way, to your left, down, over the game shelf, down. Oh, wait, wait, it's, wait. Nope. There you there go. There you go. It's going to go here. So we're over here. Yes. Because all above this and all the way around and all the uh, way around this way, this corner, is nothing but Star Wars pops. Yeah. And those are Robert's. From that corner that they can't see, mm -hmm. all the way around to somewhere right about there. Right about there. Yeah. That's all Star right Wars there. pops. It's yeah. a whole collection of them. There's plenty of room for more. Don't worry. Oh no, I know there's plenty of <coughs> room for more because we have a section of, since, of since we space. We since we rearranged where we were going to put certain things and now we're not so we have shelving space and more stuff is going to go up there or maybe some of this back here is going to go across this way and you'll be able to see new stuff up here as as things <laughs> grow. Like, like rotate the background just yeah so just you know every, and every now and then change things what we'll up do is a bit. we'll take some pictures and then put up a green screen so we can just rotate it out without actually moving anything oh that's not a bad idea that's a great idea no that's too much green screen's too much work <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm not what you call a smart man, so that will not be me. <laughs> I just sit here and I play the games poorly. Um, but yeah, this is uh, the one of four from uh, this the Mandalorian set. Uh, of course, it's the Mandalorian. This one gotta go. Uh, Cara Dune, the IG Eleven, and Quill. I don't know if I can actually get that close enough to, yeah. So he, he's he's uh why is it crooked? Oh, there we go. Because you're holding. Because I'm holding it crooked. <laughs> but yeah, that got the number one guy, and then the other three eventually. I'm guessing there are characters in the new Mandalorian. I haven't seen it yet. I've to, I'm gonna I watch know. it. We're <laughs> about to watch it as soon as we're done talking I, I, to you I was, guys. I was about to watch it, and then she asked if we could record this so we could get it done and out of the way. And, and then he's like, I have to pause it. Yes. <laughs> like it was like the first ten seconds of the show, and she's. Okay. <laughs> All right, so we got one left. We do. We have one left, and <clears throat> we were talking about this, and it, every now and then it seems to come up in the conversation. Like we talk about um, random old movies and um, Reno pop culture, and what is pop culture, and um, the difference between a classic movie and a cult classic and movie. That we're panel we're going to. That, yeah, I know. We're going to talk about the panel. But one of the things in that, talking about movies and classics and pop culture and occult classics, one of my personal favorite cult classics happens to be... Your favorite be, what? Been, happens to be... You've been drinking or slurring your words. I know. My, my favorite cult classic. I have been sick. I've, been, I've still been horribly sick. I'm on like round two of being sick again. And I have a little bit of energy, which is why I asked him to do this before I run out. Oh. Um, my, one of my favorites, one of, not the, but one of my favorite cult classics happens to be Little Shop of Horrors. And I saw this Audrey 2 and I was like, oh my god, I need to have it. It was one of those few things that called out to me and said, please take me home. Um, and, and one of the reasons why I like Little Shop of Horrors is it was one of the few movies that Robert would actually sit down and watch with me. And I say that on multiple different levels. Because Robert did not like musicals at all. You name a musical, he would not watch it. Not only would he not watch it, he would not watch girly movies with me. If it was, quote, a girly movie, it was in a cabinet that was separated from the living room that only my, my movies were in. But for some reason, Robert actually sat down one night and watched Little Shop of Horrors with me. And I fell in love with it. I mean, I already liked it, but I fell in love with it even more. And then recently, we were people have been <coughs> talking, and it's come up in conversations more than once with Little Shop of Horror. And, like, we were talking about what the name of the plant. That's how we got into the conversation, Matt and I. Like, what kind of plant was it? And, like, it was like... It's two types of plants. It's a Venus flytrap and something else. I can't remember what the other plant was. It's some kind of flowering vining plant, which was mm -hmm. also a bug-eating plant. Carnivorous. Carnivorous plant. And we just kind of like went off and like went to YouTube and we went to <laughs> we went to um <laughs> Wikipedia and we were just looking up Audrey what kind of plant was Audrey 2 supposed to be and all those things and so I just fell in love with it. And I was like, I had to have it. I had to bring it home. It just spoke to me on many different levels. So those were the neat little toys that we've gotten. So we got, I got the Coca-Cola Bear Pop from Will Bento. That, the Little Shop of Horrors, Audrey 2, I got just for me because okay. I loved it. So yes. The, the and, and we got the Mandalorian. He got the Mandalorian mm -hmm. for himself because as much as he loves Star Wars and the new Mandalorian, that's the show that's coming like out. Like I said, we each got one. Mm -hmm. You got one, I got one, Robert got one. <laughs> yes, he might, yes, Robert very much got one he's, for himself. He, he's not even here anymore <laughs> and he's still collecting pops. He's still pops. collecting pops. <laughs> and that was something else that I've we've recently talked about. M the majority of these pops that are up here, particularly like the Star Wars ones and like some of the video game ones, they were given to they were given to Robert as as gifts, um, and Robert never paid more than twenty bucks for any pop that he has. And I remember him looking up, particularly like the wampum one with Luke that's up here. Um, like it's like a hundred, it's over a hundred bucks now, worth 
Oh yeah, the, the, yeah, the, the um, upside down Luke, Luke Skywalker and the Hothwampa. And and for a, a brief moment of 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 hesitation and and deliberation on my part, I have considered. I have considered, which is why he's twinging. I have considered selling some of Robert's pops to the shock and horror of what a lot of people would be feeling right now who 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 knew this if they knew this no <laughs> he has his ass with a pocket knife and he's threatening to hurt me with it because I had a thought and I'm provided that unless it was such absolute dire needs that I would never <laughs> ever sell one of Robert's pops. <laughs> I know. I'm horrible for even thinking about it. Um, alright, alright, I promise. I won't, I won't, I won't, I know. It gives him hives to even, me even considering it at all. So that was part of the pop culture con. And, and the last thing that we got to do, which I was really thrilled about, was, um, I got to go to a panel and Matt sat with me um, at this panel and it was called um, Keep It Classic and basically what it was about um, this the panel is by the Great Basin Geeks, Geeks which is a local group <coughs> and on Facebook on Facebook look them up Look them up. This R is our little flyer that they gave us. You don't so we will show it? it to you. You don't want to read it to him? I will read it if you will show it to him. Okay. Okay, it says, Are you a geek, nerd, fanboy, or fangirl? <laughs> Do you like sci-fi, fantasy movies, anime, video games, RPGs, books, comics? Would you like to meet other people like you? <laughs> Other people with the same passions and hobbies. Right up Robert's alley. My alley. And his alley too. <laughs> it says join the Great Basin Geeks on Facebook. So this is their little, 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 little doohickey. And, um, again, um... I know Will Bento, he's a part of the Reno Pop Hunters, um, who's also a part of this, the Great Basin Geeks, and um, they did a panel called Keep It Classic, and the panel was about um, movies, particularly what people might consider classic movies. Um, all different types of movies were brought up. Um, somebody on the panel really loved Wizard of Oz. Um, Will actually brought up the movie Crow. Um, somebody else brought up the movie Hocus Pocus. Um, so, I mean, it, it was a gambit of different types of movies that they were talking about. One of the movies that they talked about was E.T. Um, yeah, it was that, that if you would rather see a remake or keep it classic. Or keep it classic. Willow. And, was, and, and Willow, no. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> um, we're making fun of Will Bento because... Um, one of the things was that they had at the end was, would you keep a classic? And they just ran off a list. And you could say yay or nay to it. <laughs> and Will's very vocal about the no on Willow, meaning no, you cannot make a remake of this movie. Well, you can, um, but he just it wouldn't be the same. It wouldn't be the same. And then they talked about, like, okay, well, what makes a movie a classic? Or what makes a classic versus a cult classic? Like people think of Little Shop's Horrors as being a cult classic. Okay, well, what makes it a cult classic versus just a classic? And it was just a nice discussion between folks mm -hmm. on the idea. And um, afterwards, um, I went up and gave Will Bento a big old hug and um, told him it was awesome seeing him up there talking about it and discussing things. And then um, Will mentioned to me at the end of it, because uh, I had said to him, I said, you know, Robert would have a lot to say about this subject, about which movies should be classics and which could be possibly remade. Um, <laughs> of course he would. <laughs> of course he would. <laughs> to which Will told me that Will, it was Will's idea to have that particular panel. There was all kinds of different panels on different subjects at the Reno Pop Culture. 
but the reason that Will had thought about this particular panel about Keep It Classic was because it was because it was Robert's idea. It was one of the many conversations that Robert had had with Will at some point. Of course it was. Of course it was. Like, you know, having a YouTube channel for video games with Matt was one of the conversations that Robert had that I I didn't know about any of this that I found out after Robert had died. And just like you didn't know about how we were going to buy four Mario Kart machines and put them in the living room. <laughs> no, I didn't know about that either. Or, or like the gigantic arcade boxing machine that I learned about the day after. Hey, we were about three or four days after he died. We were going to get to the, the storage shed all cleared out. We were I know, I know we were. And then all of a sudden it was just going to be in there. <sighs> we were going to put all the arcade machines in there. We were going to rig up a little electricity system with our own little circuit breaker. So if whenever we wanted, we could all go down the storage shed, play freaking video games until dark. And then that'd be it. We'd save some room in the, the apartment. Well, now everybody can come here to the house and play video games. Once we get the rest of them. But what I find very interesting about... I mean, going to the Reno pop culture, but then take out a wall or two and put promoting up some more games. the Polar K channel and the YouTube channel that Robert had wanted to make um, before he had died um, is that I go to the Reno pop culture with Matt to promote the YouTube channel to watch a panel that a friend is hosting, only to find out that that panel was the brainchild was of Robert. the brainchild of Robert in the first place. <clears throat> and it's um it's like a circle it is it is very much like a circle and it's very um heartwarming and intriguing how even after robert has died he is he's still very much a part of things and he's still that's why it's called a legacy it is it really is i know it sounds funny but robert has has you know he keeps touching people that didn't sound right, but you know what I mean. He like it's like oh, he's, he's I, I reaching know, out. And he's I, I knew what you meant. He was good at that too. <laughs> I, I'd say he rated had, M channel. I would say he had his hands in a lot of things, but that didn't. Yeah. Like we were talking about on the way back, the whole RC car thing, the arcade thing, yes, the the video games, the old school stuff, new school stuff. Um, he was all, interested all his, in a his, lot of his, different his hobbies, spray and he managed to meet and interact with a lot of people and and make an impact on people and he still had time to sleep through all that i know no because he was only sleeping like less than six hours a night sometimes so that's all you need just a little bit of coffee in the morning maybe, <laughs> maybe a nos or 12. so yeah it's just oh. it's interesting how how all these things like you know kind of go in a circle and robert seems to be just the hub of that circle so i need to open this for scarlet Oh! If it works. There's, there's a little thing that Matt would like to do for Miss Scarlet, his daughter. Hopefully, so it's, we're gonna hopefully it's loud enough. Cause hopefully it's loud enough. We'll move this back just in case. I don't want to blow out the... And then, and then we are going to say goodnight for the evening. Yes, our, our 15 minute re re session turned into 40. Oh well. Okay, you ready? Yep. Oh. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> it's like opening the thing of biscuits, you know? You know it's going to pop, but it gets you every time. <laughs> So I think we're Shh. done. Is that everything for this particular episode? So yeah, we went to the Reno Pop Culture. Mm -hmm. and it was fabulous. We met fun. We met people, had fun, talked to people, enjoyed. Tell them I had you arrested. Oh yeah. I had her arrested because she didn't know the answer to something. It was a. Uh, oh crap! Now I forgot the question. It was about a horror film. Yes, it was a horror film. We um, were looking at an artist's book portfolio of artwork and like one of them was Dracula and one of them was the it, it was old school horror. It was old school horror and like Swamp Thing or the Creature mm. from the Black Lagoon. Mm -hmm. And then he showed me another one, another picture. I'm like, I know this one. I can't remember what it is. I cannot remember what it is. And he is just over here hovering Waiting for me to say it because I should know it because it's an old classic movie. Even if I don't like horror, it is an old classic movie and I should know it. I did know it after it was told to me. And I just, just hated just, that. And make sure you tell them the answer so they know. Have a. It was the old classic, like, 1930s Phantom of the Opera. 
what did the de facto but, mask yes. and we take yes, the mask off and it's all yeah and it's, yeah yeah anyway so, and i should have known that i would have i would have known it would have eventually popped up anyway she so this stormtrooper the one of like two that we saw there is walking past at the moment and he's like you are so fired meaning me to which he says that <laughs> I need to be arrested. Well, there's a stormtrooper walking by. <laughs> a storm. He's like, oh, there's somebody to arrest here. Well, let me be a stormtrooper. Dude was all in that. Think. <laughs> but unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, they took his blaster away at the door, like most cons do for some reason. Unless you go like to Vegas or... San you know, Diego. The, the big, big ones. Gigantic. Right. Big. right. This was just a smaller, but... So he put me on my knees and... Hands behind her head and everything like everything. that. Got a picture of it. I'll probably post it somewhere. Yeah. We will Once we get the Facebook back up and running, still working on that because they closed it. Um, I think that was pretty much it. Yeah, that was that was our. Event. All of the steampunk people. Mm -hmm. It's pretty good costumes. Pretty bad costumes. Um, this is really the all green. I still can't recognize where she's from. Which one? The, with the bouffant hair, it was white and triangular, and she had these funky, pointy glasses and oh, just a green leotard outfit. She looked like something out of Doctor Seuss. Could have been like it. if Doctor Seuss did sci-fi. Yeah, it was really weird. It was like a mix match, mish mish mash, mish mosh, pish posh, pish posh, um. whatever it is. <laughs> There was a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and she just slammed it into some like green spandex. Kind of like almost like a nineteen sixties cartoon. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was weird. Alien. And don't ever buy food at Comic Con. We're we're talking like eight dollars for a corn dog, four dollars for a soda. <laughs> it was eleven fifty for uh, like a it was crazy tri tip sandwich or something. Yeah, a little tri tip like, sandwich yeah, like twelve no. bucks. Eat before or after. Don't go in hungry. Bad. Those are, those are our tips for you guys. If you ever go to the Reno Comic Con and bring again. a camera. I took pictures. Three pictures. I still took them. That's you don't like having your picture taken, but you're on camera. I will never understand that. Because I can just hit stop and delete this. I can still delete the other ones. No, you can't. You mm -hmm. have them password protected. You'll never guess the password. And it's not one, two, three, four, five either. It's the same password I have in my luggage. In that movie. Never mind. <laughs> she hasn't seen uh, Ice Pirates. She hasn't seen Yellowbeard. I could go on and on, but, you know. Say goodnight, Matt. <sighs> Good night, Matt. Bye, guys.